We are continuing with our list of examples of optimization problems. And this time we look at a problem that uh, might look a little more complicated. A man stands on the edge of a 3 km wide band of marshland and needs to reach as soon as possible a point B situated across the marshes but 10 km south of the point directly across. And we know that he can walk at 2 km per hour in the marches and run at 8 km per hour on normal terrain. And we would like to know where he should emerge from the marches to reach his destination as soon as possible. So, as usual, one of the first things we want to do is try to draw a picture to represent the situation. So here are the marches, and our man stands on the edge um, of the marchland at a point that we're going to call A. He wants to reach point B which is across the marches 10 km south. So here is a point that I will call C directly across A and the point B is across the marches but 10 km south. Now the problem for this man is to reach B as soon as possible. And to do that, he could, for instance, try to minimize the time that he spends in the marches, so go straight across to C, and then run all along from C to B. Or he could minimize the distance and go straight from A to B, but then he's also spending more time in the marches where he's not going as fast. Or it could be that the best possible way is to go across the marches um, and emerge at a certain point D that is between C and B and then run the rest of the time from D to B. So we want to minimize the time to go from A to B. In other words, we want to minimize the time to go from A to D and then the sum of that with the time to go from D to B. Here D could be equal to C or equal to B, potentially. So what is this time to go from A to D, for instance? Well, because from A to D, uh, the man is moving at constant speed, so at, at uh, constant speed, we know that the speed is distance divided by time. Or in other words, the time required to cover uh, given distance is his distance divided by the speed. So in our case that means the time to go from A to D is a distance AD divided by the speed over AD and you see that he can work at 2 km per hour across the marches. So from A to D is going 2 km per hour so this time to go from A to D is a distance AD divided by 2. On the other hand, he can run at 8 km per hour on normal terrain, so from D to B is on normal terrain, and that's going to be the time required to go from D to B is going to be the distance dB divided by 8. Now the question is, where should he emerge from the marches? In other words, where should we put D to optimize the time, to minimize the time? So to answer this question, of course, we need to locate D to begin with. And to do that, we should locate D with respect to one of the fixed points, so either C or B. I'm going to pick C and call X the distance CD. Now we want to find X that is going to minimize the time. But to do that, we need to express the time as a function of X. So we're going to try to express the distance AD as a function of x and the distance BD as a function of x. One other thing we know is that the band of marches is 3 km wide, so we have 3 km for the distance AC. Now that gives us a way to calculate AD as a function of x because this triangle here is a right triangle and therefore we can apply the Pythagorean theorem in it to the effect that AD squared is 3 squared, so 9 plus x squared. In other words, the distance AD is the root of 9 plus x squared. As for 
the distance db, you see that the distance cb is 10 kilometers and cd is x, so db is what remains 10 minus x. Substituting ad and db uh, with the expressions in terms of x we have found, we find the time required to go from a to b as a function of x. Explicitly, it is square root of 9 plus x squared divided by 2 plus 10 minus x divided by 8. And now we want to minimize this function on the closed interval 0, 10. Why on the closed interval 0, 10? x equals 0 corresponds to going straight across to c. x equals 10 corresponds to going all the way from a to b and emerging from the marches at b. Of course it would make no sense to get x negative because that means that we would emerge from the mar mar marches north of c and of course it would take more time than emerging from the marches at c. Similarly, it would make no sense to have x greater than 10 because that would mean emerging from the marches south of b which would take more, more time than going straight to b. So now we have a continuous function on a closed interval. We know that the minimum exists and it can only occur at one of the endpoints, 0 or 10, or at a critical value. So now we need to look for the critical values of the function t that lie in the interval 0, 10. To do that, we differentiate the function. So we have 1 half times the derivative of square root of 9 plus x squared. This is the square root of a function, so we differentiate it with the chain rule. We get the derivative of the square root function, that's 1 over 2 square root, evaluated at the inside function. We get 1 over 2 square root of 9 plus x squared. But we need to multiply that by the derivative of the function inside, and the derivative of 9 plus x squared is 2x. So we get 2x divided by 2 square root of 9 plus x squared. On the other hand, when we differentiate 10 minus x divided by 8, you can think of that as 10 8, which is a constant, minus 1 8 multiplied by x. The derivative of the constant is 0. The derivative of a constant times x is just that constant. So for the derivative of 10 minus x divided by 8, we just get minus 1 8. So here is our derivative. And now we want to know when it is 0. And it is 0 if x divided by the root of 9 plus x squared is 1 8 multiplied by 2, in other words, 1 fourth. Now here, we only need to find the potential, um, potential critical values to evaluate the function at these uh, values because they are among the potential places where we may have a minimum. So I'm not going to worry whether I continue using equivalences or not. Uh, what is clear is that a necessary condition is that x squared over 9 plus x squared is equal to 1, 16, so I obtain, uh, 1 over 16, and I obtain that just by squaring both sides of this equality. Then multiplying both sides by 9, 9 plus x squared, I get x squared is 1 16th of 9 plus x squared, and then I can solve for x squared. So x squared is multiplied by 1 minus 1 16th, which is 15 over 16. And on the right hand side, I have 9 over 16. Multiplying both sides by 16, I get x squared multiplied by 15 equal 9. In other words, x squared is 9 over 15. That gives me that the only place where the derivative could be 0 is when x is the square root of 9 over 15, in other words, 3 over root of 15. So now I know that this continuous function on a closed interval has an absolute minimum on the interval, and it can, open, it can happen either at 0, at 3 over square root of 15, or at 10. I just, and, and this 3 over um, square root of 15 is in the interval 0, 10. So I'm just going to evaluate the function at these three values. At 0, we get 2.75 hour, for the time required, so that corresponds to the time it takes if I if this man goes straight to C across the marches and then runs all along from C to B. At time 10, I'm sorry, for x equal 10, 
the time is 5.22 hours. This is the time required if it goes all the way in the marches from A to B. And then if it emerges from the marches 3 over square root of 15 kilometers south of C, then it would take him slightly less time than going straight to C. It would take him 2.7 hours. That means that the minimum is 2.7 hours and um, the value of x that gives this minimum time is 3 over square root of 15 which is approximately 0.77 and therefore to reach his destination as soon as possible he should emerge from the march, march land 0.77 kilometers south of sea. Now turn to the next video for one more example.